Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Ah, Alan, you continue to prove yourself the Coalition's most valuable asset. Thank you, sir. If there's a mole, I'll find them. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. And within this particular episode, we are continuing our Invincible Season 2 coverage. And with that, this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Season 2, Episode 3, which is entitled The Missive This Machination. Hmm. And the uh, synopsis for this particular episode, Jamie, do you have it? Mark starts his college career. Debbie struggles with a personal trauma. And Alan the alien returns home to find a new threat facing the coalition of planets. Yeah. And what were your overall thoughts about this particular episode? Because I I found the episode a little bit. It was kind of split up in a few ways. Purposely. But it, it felt like a, uh, like several episodes or several stories in one particular episode because we got Mark's story of him going back to college. And then we got Debbie's story of her dealing with uh, trauma. Literally, uh, she, she seeks out help at some sort of support group. And then we get Alan the alien. But then we get another story at the very end which is like a a side story which is literally mark (laughs) being tapped for a different mission by somebody interesting yeah it was very different the way it was broken up i mean at a certain point when they had like the narrator overview like going back and forth yeah that was different completely and it threw me off (laughs) but i was like i was like this is like an 80s like clip show a little bit like an 80s clip episode or is it mtv <laughs> oh no i i always go back to like the simpsons oh, whenever okay. it's a clip thing and like <laughs> one of the one of them they're like we're sorry like they had a song and i'm not gonna sing now because even when my voice is 100 percent, that doesn't sound good yeah um, i know but like the, they have a song and one of them was like we're sorry for this clip episode or whatever i forget exactly what they call it, but that song like popped in my head at a certain point yeah But yeah, it's it definitely had several different aspects within it uh, of for the characters that we we got to see the people that we do follow within the series. And I thought I thought it was interesting, pretty cool, had a good time with it within this particular episode. There was a few things that I found very interesting. The one was the Alan the Alien story, because it felt like its own story unto itself. And how he came to be. And we get to hear his story through the narration or the narrator that's there. And and talk about how he was part of a project from his uh, his planet. And then, you know, he's a product of breeding He was the camps. best they could make. He was the best that they, of all, the, all of them that they made. Yep. And uh, we get to hear uh, Peter Cullen's voice. uh <laughs> Which is literally uh, the person in charge of like the coalition of planets. So that's pretty cool. And we, we get Optimus Prime's voice in the, in this. Yeah. He really does enjoy Alan, but they actually talk to him about Mark, about Invincible and his interactions with him, how a Viltrumite would be, uh, very much needed for, uh, well, this Viltrumite that, that he had encountered, Alan had yeah, encountered, the, the is good, completely different. The good one, but they still, but no one seemed to trust that Mark or Invincible, whichever one he was being called at that point in time, was yeah. good. They didn't trust him because he is a Viltrumite, which, based on their history, I get it. Yeah. But, you know, I was like, I'm watching that and I'm like, oh, if only Mark could hear that. Yeah, because it, he would realize he's not his dad. Exactly. I think that's more of the the recertification of him knowing that he's not anything like his dad, who like anybody from Viltrum, and that would 
been needed a lot too because he still sees that to some degree even in within this episode he still f- feels that that pain and you know it, and at least there's somebody there who's backing him up which it would be alan which i really did enjoy for the fact that we do get like at, at one point we get a title card about alan the alien yeah and we get credits for alan the alien yeah and like, I'm, when I, that hit, when that hit i'm like this episode's not over. I know it's not that short. Like, I know it's not a 20-minute yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it made me think right away. I was like, all right, is this a setup? Because we already got Adam Eve. And that was something out of the blue. It was I'm good. Hoping, I mean. I'm hoping that, like, you said that we were going to get four episodes for this half of the season. And yeah. then next year, we'll probably get the the last half of this particular season. What if in between we get a whole Alan the Alien I'm down. episode I, I, or movie, just like Adam Eve? And I thought that, yeah, I'm down with it, too. And I, I just love the character. Seth Rogen plays it perfectly. And we get to see a lot more of Alan the Alien in his personality. We find out he has a girlfriend because it intertwines with the story of Mark. Because even the narrator goes back and forth at one point, is dealing with William and then he feels like, oh, wow, William's getting busy with this girl. Oh, he left the sock on the door. He's getting busy with that guy that went in there. Oh, so he goes to see Amber. And then he has to deal with Amber. And then you got Amber going. Deal with. Yeah. Nobody de- saw my air quotes, but you. <laughs> yeah, but it's not deal with. But, you know, they get together. It's like one of those the, the, the college I, uh, things I'm to do. I'm shocked that didn't happen before college. I was not. (laughs) I adored all of her questions. Oh, yeah. About her super sperm. Yes. (laughs) And like, are you going to go crazy when it happens? You're going to go mad and like kill me? Like, she's like, I've seen what you can do. (laughs) I mean, these are valid, valid questions. Like you should ask your partner all kinds of things that you're worried about before engaging in sexual activity with them. She was she did a great job. She was very valid in her her questioning. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, especially with crushing her. <laughs> with, like, with one. Maybe we'll start out with me on top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just to be safe. No, 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 no. If you do that with one thrust, I you will be through my throat and eh, out of my eyes. Uh, well, I mean, how many times have people had questions about, about Superman? Superman and <laughs> Lois <laughs> Lane. <laughs> that has always been that <laughs> a question. <laughs> Does it shoot right out of her? <laughs> Do condoms even work for superheroes? That would Does it have to be kryptonite? <laughs> yeah. Like, does he need a crypt- kryptonite condom? <laughs> but I thought it was pretty cool because it intertwines because even narrator was getting uncomfortable. He was like, all right, we'll, we'll move back to Alan the alien. And there is Alan the alien getting it on with his girlfriend. Tell you. <laughs> yep. And then he goes, well, let's let's focus on the feline yeah, little companion, kitty. the little kitty, the one-eyed kitty that he has. <laughs> I want one. It was cute. That was cute. And but I then thought, we had to watch it like it's a butthole. Yeah. And it's just like, okay. And then it, it goes more into the whole Alan alien story, but he gets sent by the coalition to... Uh, no, he doesn't get sent. He's just having lunch or dinner with his his girlfriend Talia at one point, mm-hmm. and it's so weird that you know they're just having a casual talk. He's eating his grubs, whatever they are, and they're just moving off the plate. And she goes, "Oh, it's disgusting." <laughs> that but was yet, so cool. He goes, uh, "Your plate kind of likes what I got here." Meanwhile, it's her food that's eating, and she's eating the brain. Yeah, <laughs> it's like okay. That I don't know who thought of that, but that was brilliant. It was such a cute little touch. Yeah. I feel very. It felt very Kirkman-y, though. It, it also, uh, yeah, it did. Yeah, Robert Kirkman did that. That was something that he would do. But and the funny thing is, is also that how he, uh, you know, it, it just it, it just made me think of like Indiana Jones and in, in the Temple of Doom with the snakes coming out, and then you know all all the snakes coming out of the snake. But you also had them eating monkey brains. It's as if like the monkey brains or the monkey's heads were eating the snakes <laughs> at one point. <laughs> if you it think was, about it, it was brilliant. Yeah, it's, it was a great idea. Uh, w- with that, though, they they get attacked 
by a group of people and they're Viltrums. Yep. And they, he goes, oh, I thought right away you would just start just killing people right away. And they were doing this whole mental conversation. They were trying to get more information out of him, basically. Yeah, I loved how they were projecting right into his brain, like none of their mouths moved. Yep. And they literally beat the eye, the arm off him at a certain point. That was, I mean, I love some good gore. And one of the things I love about this show is how gross and yet beautiful Yeah, they do some of this gore. And it was done very well, but you, it made me feel more for Alan. Yeah. Because at the very end, he was like, I thought right away, it's like, he's dead. And then well, we yeah, see- no, like my notes say, wow, Alan's death scene yeah. was beautiful, mm. gory, but beautiful. And that eyeball floating was just the right touch. Like it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, you know, then a couple <laughs> lines later, it's like, oh, no, wait. Alan's not dead. <laughs> yep, and Alan's Yay! not. He he's in the hospital or what would be it known as a space hospital. Tell you is there. Uh, the leader of the coalition is there. Uh, they have words and saying he'll get better. And then next thing you know, you see him turn off the stuff. Now, mind you, he's probably in a chamber, kind of like a healing chamber at that point. So who's yeah. to know if Alan will come back? And you know, I Jason I do- X rise from the dead. Yeah, exactly. But I just love what Alan had to say to his Viltrum attackers. He goes, you Biclopses are all the same or all look the same. (laughs) Meanwhile, because he's a Cyclops and he calls them Biclopses. (laughs) I thought it was pretty cool. It's really cool. And the fact that like we, we did get Peter Cullen, but on one of the Viltrums that did attack Alan, the alien, was also voiced by Tatiana Maslany who we all know from Orphan Black and as well as yeah. from She-Hulk. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant actress. Yeah, great actress. And I, I just love the fact that we got her voice in this and it was amazing. But that was the story of poor Alan, the alien at this point, because I, I think they gave us that snippet, that little now, story interjection for a reason. Do you think, and his name is escaping me, mm-hmm. um, the leader the guy who turned off his the you know turned off the life support system. Correct. You think he was the one who was the mole that brought them to it? That's a good yeah. possibility. Because at first, I thought it was the girlfriend. Honestly. Yeah, but with how I she it was, was her, but then the upset way with him, yeah, yeah. the way yeah. everything went down after dinner, I'm like, no, it's not her. I was like, it can't you know who be. it is. And then when he turned off life support, I'm like, ooh, it makes what me if think, he's yeah. The mole? Yeah, it's a possibility, a huge possibility. Who knows? Or maybe it was something that they had had created for a truce with the Viltrums. Maybe. Because they were using literally Alan as like a kind of like a lookout. Yeah. For certain planets and things of that nature. So that way, if some sort of Viltrum comes into play and they have to do something, he is there to notify them. Uh, and the also coalition. the other thing that was told during the fight with the Viltrums was that they didn't know Omni Man had left his post. Yes. They they or had no clue. That he had a son. Yep. Which yep. honestly surprises me. Yeah. Uh it means that uh Omni Man himself had not been in touch with Viltrum throughout his time on Earth, which makes the ending a little bit interesting yeah as well but uh let's let's move on to a different subject within the episode that we get more story out of now uh let's talk about rudy and monster girl that was so cute it is so cute it, it's so funny because it's so hard for him to do he has to um uh, he <laughs> he wants to ask uh, monster girl out and it was one of the hardest things that he had to do. And it's so uncomfortable. And he still covered it with a, to test my fear. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Whatever he was doing to keep his fear at bay. Yeah, it was like testing his fear to see. It's like literally dipping his toe into the human condition. Because as we all know, he was robot <laughs> at one point. Yeah. Uh, another version of it. But uh, even still, he's robot at heart. Robot at heart. And 
she's there to guide him on his way. So they have to go to the movie. They, he winds up building up that whole thing. They ask her out to the movies to go see a slaughterhouse movie or whatever it Midnight is. Midnight Slaughter. Midnight Slaughter. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, I'd watch that. <laughs> both of them look way too young to get into a rated R film. So a woman there who's a mother vouches for them, allows them in. But afterwards, he gets to experience something that he never did before as a human, which is eat a hamburger. And I thought it was pretty cool how, you know, he uh, he just goes crazy over the burger and fries. And she kind of points out the fries and he asked the waiter at Burger Mart, sir, another burger, please. He goes, no, they that don't have so waiters here, <laughs> Rudy, at, at Burger Mart. And he was like, because she was just saying, because she's like typical girl. It's like, you wait on my bowl of food. <laughs> Get more. Well, it went fa- like he went from, oh, this is good. She like let out like a sentence or two. And then all of the food was gone. Like, Yeah, yeah he consumed it fast. Yeah. So I thought it was, I thought that was pretty cute and cool. We also get a little bit glimpse into the Guardians of the Globe uh, during gym time. So uh, Dupley and Rex uh, get into an argument about her cheating on him with Immortal. <laughs> yeah. I, Is it I mean, really cheating at that point? I don't know. Well, I mean, if they were together. I don't know if they were officially together. Yeah. I think a lot of it was in Rex's head more than anything. And I mean, he, yeah, and then she tries I mean, to justify it. Well, he is a jerk, but she also tries to justify it too with uh, how she has more of a connection to Immortal because of the amount of times that he had died. And she feels that way with her duplicates that she leads. And basically, in her mind, with the amount of duplicates that she leads that died because of basically her, yeah. they add up to the same age as Immortal. <laughs> I mean, and there's something to, and just like with Debbie and the guy she was talking, you know, in the support group, like there is something about talking to people who understand what you've gone, something you can't explain. Yeah, it's a source of a relationship. Yeah, I mean, I I belong to a support group and they're not people I talk to outside of that, but the hour and a half a week that I spend with them. It feels very different in a good way than yeah. the rest of my life. Like just talking to people who understand without having to explain every detail is mm. is help is so incredibly helpful to like your mental load. Yeah, because you don't feel like people are judgmental. You're well, able. There's to- just yeah. There's a. I mean, there's so much to it. So like, I get when she said, you know, he's the only other person and carrying the weight of having that di- because i mean yes they're duplicates but as we know from like the sex scenes they all feel the same thing mm. so she's felt herself die like she knows what it's like to die oh yeah that's got to be heavy yeah they even though they're duplicates the, in, in certain people's minds but it's yeah. her dying over and over again after she creates them yeah like that's and, heavy yeah it's and nobody like, else can feel that or understand that. I yeah, get it. I, yeah, I've died a thousand lifetimes, and you don't know how that feels. Uh, can you <laughs> understand? And they're like, no. <laughs> and it's really hard. And then Immortal would know. But the thing is, it's also Immortal comes off a little bit. Uh, he's very harsh. Oh, yeah. He's a jerk, too. <laughs> that group. It, it that was, group it, is, it's all messed up. They're all yeah. messed up. They need therapy. They need therapy. They need to figure out how to work as a team. There's, Yeah, they need a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and let's just talk about more about Debbie's support group. Uh, she got that from a business card that Olga gave her in the very beginning. Yeah. At first, I was like, who is she calling? Them? Is she calling a hitman? Because it was a black <laughs> card with no information, like just those dots yeah. and a phone number. And then they're like, first names only. I'm like, what? Who is she having killed? <laughs> <laughs> But it was a business card just for her respect. I, I guess it's something that mm-hmm. Olga herself had done. Yeah. After but, her husband had died from obviously Omni Man. Yeah. I, but that wasn't support group, wasn't my first thought. It was. Mate, same here. I went straight to the idea. It's like, who's Nicole to get a hit? Is that on? the New Yorker in us? Is that what it's, what's going on? Probably. Who knows? 
But the funny thing is, is that uh, she goes to this and it, it's really good. It's called uh, spousal uh, spouses of superheroes support. Yeah. So it's basically SOS. And I just like that term. It's like SOS. It's like, you know, they, they've made so many acronyms from like certain um, things like that, which is but pretty once cool. They started talking like I you saw how it was going to play out. When she went out, like I obviously, had a funny, yeah, I, you, obviously, Omni Man killed them. Omni Man is the one who kills the superheroes. Obviously, correct. he killed all of their spouses. Like, but she, I don't think she knows exactly how bad Omni Man was. Like, she's learning. She's learning a lot of it, but I don't think she knows. I don't think that thought crossed her mind because I mean, mm. she's still mourning him. It's still she's still mourning the whole situation she saw his ptsd from what omni man did to her and how he explained it at the end that how she is just a pet but she's also seeing it through the support group of what had happened and also through theo's voice and his words yeah and when she finds out that his wife was the green ghost who omni man had killed uh apparently you know she goes oh just he goes i broke the rule and and this uh and duffy Dix did a great job with huh. like just the, the verbal emotion that was in it in the yeah. conversation by the way too so uh I'll, obviously a shout out to the the next uh actor that we love from you know snowpiercer and from hamilton um, hamilton yep he's also um sometimes oh what's his name the like the mime clown on Sesame Street. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> but he's an, he's a great and brilliant actor, and he, he's able to convey that at least with his voice too. So uh, I thought it was great for him and the way he was able to express it. And he goes, "Yeah, we all. Oh, that's the first thing that we're not supposed to do in SOS is like to tell who we are and who we're associated with." And then when he Theo finds out that you know debbie's husband was omni man uh you know she basically confesses who her husband was uh he tells her not to come back to the group and it just breaks her yeah just, she finally thought she had people who she could talk to her back but the thing is as soon as she confessed and stated who her husband was then that was like all bets were off Which and it's i, I it's, get yeah i get it sucks it sucks so bad but her husband probably killed every single person in that room every single person's house in that room yeah yeah so this is even harder for her now especially with mark being away in college and you could I'm, see because she was hesitating on texting mark back and you could see there was like several texts and you know it's yeah. a typical mom thing to do as you know if oh, you know, your kids were older you would be like that too it's like oh make sure you're doing this oh i um, love my boyfriend's daughter's in college. I, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know the situation. So it's like you're always there and you're always going to be a parent. But that's one thing that you can rely on is your children are always going to be there. And with Mark now, he's more of an adult. So he's learning, trying to be an adult, also learning to be invincible at the same time, and also dealing with the fact of his father and dealing with that grief and that struggle especially with Cecil <laughs> and being a hero as well. So she uh, she's reluctant to reach out. So she kind of halts her texts at, at a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was overall very good. But there's like, like, like last episode, I thought this had a lot of information in it, which was done well. Now, mind you, that's a lot to pack in into 45 minutes, but the yeah. last, the last like five to 10 minutes that we get. The <laughs> last minute. Last minute with Seance Dog just showing up at Mark's. Well, door. that was the last five to 10. I'm talking the very last thing. Oh, that one. Well, we're going to get to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Seance Dog shows up, which is in the very beginning when William and Mark get into the apartment complex or not the, uh, uh, it's the student housing. So dorm. they share the dorm. 
So they're they're sharing this storm together, and William's like... I love like, that they're together. William's I, not as great as he was last season, but I still have a soft spot in my heart for him. I, I just love how William started to like talk about, it's like, you know, I could have gentleman colors and this and that. I have to put the sock on here. Dude, oh. That is a first night conversation you have when you move into a dorm room. <laughs> I, I've i never had one, so that I knew, but I know from other people that's what happens. Yeah. And Mark was like, he's talking about how lame Mark could be <laughs> as a person. <laughs> and he goes, you're going to bring your toys. And then next, you know, knock at the door. Hey, who left the box of toys out here? They're not toys. They're collectibles. Yes. <laughs> I'm so bummed that he threw them out. Like, OK, fine. Don't display them. Leave them in a box. Bring them home the next, you know, send them with your mom the next yeah. time she visits. But. <laughs> don't just throw them out like you brought them all the way to college you had you know yeah they they he spent years collecting them you know they know they're they're important to him yeah but um, yeah one of them or which, text mom and have her come back oh yeah yeah and i'll give mom a reason to come back to talk to him but yeah, you know, it's like one of them that was in there with seance dog he actually talks to it at a certain point you sorry bud you gotta go yeah, and, Sam's dog was obviously his favorite. Yeah. And uh, lo and behold, uh, after that conversation and the uh, misunderstanding of Mark when he sees the sock on the door, thinking that William was getting busy with some guy, he's like, oh, I'll go to Amber's. And that's when all the hanky panky go on between him and Amber. The, uh, you know, they have that conversation and even William says, no, no, I wish <laughs> and it didn't happen. But he goes, uh, but he explained it. But the door, he, there's a knock at the door and he opens it up and it's Seance Dog. You're not real. <laughs> and, and it just goes on to this whole thing. And then he's attacking yeah. him. when they're having, well, I love how they've got to like leave the dorm mm. because whoops. Um, but then when Sam's dogs is like, no, in other dimensions. But I'm like, oh, that's right. We have portals to other dimensions. Yep. And but the, then that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah. Well, New uh says that his uh, planet of Thraxia uh, or Thraxans, uh, which is his people, are subjected or just being attacked. He needs his help as invincible. Uh, through that, Mark talks to Cecil and Cecil says you're not ready and I was just like wow it's like it's typical Cecil trying to play the I'm going to be here I'm going to be in charge of you I'm your boss you can't do mm -hmm. this and he still goes out there to uh, the th to Thraxia uh, for Noel Zot and to help his people now mind you you didn't get the whole truth now at I did not tr like even okay like when saying so i'm like this doesn't feel right yeah and then noel's all, i'm like this still something's definitely up like i did not expect the truth <laughs> like okay we're going to see the monarch and i expected a butterfly I'll, but i also expect it i did i thought it was the other viltramites oh the other yeah group because of them. we already had that hint anyway from like the alan Alan Alien, yeah, that, that that's was that's what idea. I thought it was going to be. I thought it was a setup by them. I thought it was him being like uh, sucked away to another planet, and when it had nothing to do with the Viltrumites or anything else, it was just another set of people that were going to try to be like, "Hey, uh, you need to fix this." Oh, by the way, you got to bury my whatever. Like last episode, okay. <laughs> they did away with that at Barbaric Custom. Come on, Mark. I know that, but this is a whole different. Yeah, group and, and they're insects. Who knows? Maybe they wanted multiple eggs. But, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it, it felt like a setup. It felt weird. Oh, yeah. I thought it was the other bitch because, especially the fact that he kept calling him Mark. Yes, instead of Omni Man. Like that. That was uh, that was it was constantly Mark instead of him saying Invincible. And yeah. then Mark had to correct him saying, hey, when I'm in my costume, you have to call me invincible all the time. And uh, Noel also didn't understand that. And it got to the point. And then he gets they finally get to the planet. He sees all he goes, I thought you were destroyed by something. What's going on here? Oh, we got to meet our uh, the uh, the head of us. I, I 
they the monarch. They, they called them monarch. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't get that They were far. very hot, heavy on the bug references. Okay. So they finally get there, and then obviously, who do we see? Omni Man. Yep. What? And it's like it's like hi, Mark. It's been a long time. And he puts out his hands, and I was like, oh wow. But was- he, the fact that he used Seance Dog means he gave a shit when mark was a kid he remembered what mark liked when he was a kid like that's yes we're gonna see how it plays out yeah it's either really really sweet or fucking twisted but we're not gonna know until hopefully the next episode and we see how it plays out yeah i think it's gonna be twisted (laughs) probably (laughs) yeah i did not see omni man coming uh, yeah, I did not see Omni Man coming as well. I I, I knew it was going to be a surprise, but I thought, okay, it's something that's going to lead us because this is only, as you said, this is like the first half of a season. We have another yeah. half of the season, and I was not expecting Omni Man in any way, shape, or form. I figured maybe at the end, at and the end of the season, season, we get three. a hint about him, and he yeah. would be part of season three. Yeah. I figured he'd be gone for season two. We've met our bad guy mm-hmm. for season two, who we haven't seen a ton of. Yeah. We haven't seen a ton of other dimensions. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I'm not complaining. Like, I'm liking how the season's playing out. I like being, I like being surprised. I like being wrong. Like, yeah, well, we can't figure this off factor this in. It's not like we have anything. But then again, we haven't read the comics. So if right. this was in the comics, obviously, you comic readers know ahead if this was true or false. And if you were a comic reader and you remembered that, please let us know. But yeah, I I uh, just watching this as I I normally would from any TV show I would. It, it took me aside going, oh okay, I like being surprised. You know, uh, you yeah, would think I was... with my last name Kirkman, I would actually have read the comic completely. <laughs> but there's always time. Uh, there's always time. You know how much those omnibuses go for? They're like so thick and big. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really did enjoy this episode. Uh, we had a lot of deep cuts in this. A lot of cool cameos. And a lot of cool characters in it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I if Last episode felt busy. Like I couldn't keep up. Yeah. I think I think I watched it three times to feel confident to talk about it. I know, granted, some of it I'm sitting down writing notes and whatever. This episode was full, but not packed. Like I felt like I got everything that was going on. I enjoyed the pacing. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it uh, uh, overall and how we got it. And it's just weird how they could jam so much in once a one forty five minute episode. And yeah. get it and get it right because certain yeah. shows don't get it right like that. So at least they thought well with the editing, they thought well in the stories that they wanted to project and how we're getting them. So at least uh, we could follow on and be happy with it. I'm pretty sure there's with anything, there's always somebody who's against it or doesn't like it. But oh, yeah. I understand that. And, but me, I was happy with it. Me too. All right. Well, with that, uh, was there any notes that you didn't top on? No, I think we talked about everything. Uh, any quotes that you had that were interesting that we didn't speak of? Uh, I liked Monster Girl. Wait, if this is your first movie, what other normal stuff haven't you done? Mm. <laughs> Meaning there's still more to this relationship. Obviously, we've seen that with Mark and Amber, and we've also seen this with Talia and Alan. <laughs> yeah, I was like, are we getting another sex scene this, this yeah, episode? Yeah, no, it's like, okay. Uh, it's like, how does that work? It's not a show you you show me yours and you show me mine kind of yeah. episode, I guess. Um, the uh, the only one that I have left would be Thadia, uh, Thadis, or Theatis saying, uh, Filtramites don't battle one another, but a son defies a father? These are weaknesses. The first we found and the one we exploit. So that was from Peter Cullen himself. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was so awesome hearing that voice. 
Yeah, just hearing his voice in general and actually meeting him in person is always great too. Uh, I he was at Fan Expo Philly. Yes. Over the summer. Yeah, he was. And I didn't get a chance to meet him. I got to just go up to talk to him. That was it. I, I should have gone with get, you. I didn't get an autograph. I was just like, oh man, it's Peter Collins. I should have gone with you. Mark and I were there together. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were there with your boyfriend Tony and and his uh, niece, but uh, and I ditched them too, too to go see Sam Raimi. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Peter Cullen was there. I was I was making my rounds when I was getting lost and looking for Jamie and, and Tony and everybody else at one point, or even Ben, because uh, yeah. Ben was there. Yeah, Ben uh, was doing the panels. Yeah, Ben. I think was, he did the Peter Cullen panel. He did do it, and I missed it. But the thing is, is I went to Peter Cullen's like table just to say hello because you know just a just a fanboy out. Yeah, because you know he's a voice from my childhood. Malcolm, my son, has gotten into Transformers recently, and I started him with the old cartoons. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you can he... find the missing ones that are in Japan, those are interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those those are harder to come by. I think it was like season four or something like that. He's four. He's okay with what's easily available. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just don't show him the movie. He'll be upset. <sighs> no. <laughs> why was everything from our childhood so traumatic i know well it's funny too by the time the movie came out i was in high school so I mean, it wasn't as traumatic but the only th- funny thing about that was like oh wow they said a four-letter word in a pg animated oh yeah cartoon. <laughs> that i'm not worried about it's more the the yeah the death scene the death scene oh <laughs> yeah that one's it's heavy. Like, how do you explain that to a kid? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because he calls them the Transformers. And sometimes he'll call them Optimus Prime. But most of the time he calls them the mega good guy and the mega bad guy. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> it's, he's, he's learning. <laughs> he's got his time. And it's good that he's interested in the older stuff, too, like that. The only problem is just they didn't have the metal toys that I had when I was growing up when it came to the Transformers. Because yeah. <laughs> they were made of metal. I had an Optimus Prime at one point in my life. But, uh, yeah, well, uh, the, for you listeners, that, that was our coverage of Invincible Season 2, Episode 3. So, uh, yeah. We, you could tell how much we enjoyed it and we liked it. We did. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed our coverage. But uh, we kind of mentioned the idea of feedback. So uh, with feedback, if you do have any thoughts and ideas of anything that we do on the podcast, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. You, I put, I had posted a actual uh, feedback section for uh, for Facebook and Instagram, which is at Panels to Pixels Podcast on Instagram. So usually I put the same picture. You just put it in saying, "Hey, I'll just leave your comments below the image of what we're covering next," and I would state if it's specifically. So all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, like I said, or the Instagram page, and just leave comments. For that particular episode, I'll still get them. Uh, if you feel that uh, you just want to email us, all you have to do is email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. So that's panels and two is spelled out to and then pixels and then the number one at Gmail. You could write out your own texted thoughts and then we'll read them on the podcast. Or you could just record your voice and just send it as an attachment and then we'll play it and then you could be part of the podcast and you know you you'll have your thoughts out there audio wise for everybody to hear and then we can comment about it now obviously we're not going to appreciate cr- it yeah we'd appreciate it but we're not going to criticize you we're not going to shame you we we're, we want you to be heard as well too so it's nice when you have people out there we may respectfully disagree on occasion but yeah yeah that's but- that's a better conversation though yeah, it makes for great conversation, and it makes for a great conversation if you would like to be on as well. So all I have to do is send that in the email form, too. It's like, hey, I have thoughts on this. I would like to be on. Literally, all you have to do is ask. Uh, we can be found on YouTube, which is another format of uh, or player of choice at times for people. It's regular YouTube. All you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast, subscribe. Uh, ring the bell to be notified when we the new episode is up. 
uh, a lot of it is literally just the podcast on regular form. Uh, like a, it's just a static image of, you know, me putting the panel <laughs> to pixels logo with the images there. Uh, yeah. And, uh, literally we, uh, you know, we just put that up so you could hear it. And then obviously there's YouTube podcasts that you could hear us on. And along with that, we have other podcast player choices that we have, which is Spotify, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. So you could find us there or just tell a friend. Word of mouth is always greatly appreciated. But you could tell them, you could find them there. Just go to Apple Podcasts, search for Panels to Pixels Podcast. Uh, you could probably find it under my name, Mark Kirkman, by the way, because I think that's how it is listed. Because when I originally started on the Next Level Online Radio Podcast Network, uh or next level online radio uh that's how it was set up by ben back but uh yeah with those particular podcast players of choice uh or apps of choice i should say uh you know if you could give us a rating or review there it'd be greatly appreciated five stars would be greatly appreciated but i always like everybody for them to be honest but uh that would be it but just to let you know there is somebody who did send in feedback because he followed Yay. along. And that would be our friend, Steve Brown. Hey, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> so uh, this is what Steve has to say on the episode. Why is it the dorm rooms in TV shows and, and animation always are bigger than what is in real life? Hey, Mark and Jamie, this is Steve, and this is going to be for Invincible Season 2, Episode 3. <laughs> he throws out all his collectibles except Psychic Dog. Is that what that is? Who's got, who has sex on the first day of college? Have he and Amber never done it before? Is this the first time for both of them? I, I guess it is. Sounds like it. Wait, who is this narrative narrator now? <laughs> this missive machination? <laughs> oh, so now we're getting the origins of Alan from season one. Nice. <laughs> Instead of Invincible, we get an Alan the Alien title card. I love it. And this has just been the cold open. I hope this doesn't go too long. Total side note, I want to thank you all for your first two episodes because I was so confused in episode one that I actually stopped watching. And so I had to binge episode one and two and then to get to episode three. But it was because of your coverage on Panels to Pixels that I decided to keep going. I just paused it and saw that Tatiana Maslany is one of the voices here. Love her. <laughs> Family show. Let's not return to Mark and Amber just as yet. Oh, and not back to Talia and Alan. Oh, the Viltrumites have found out what happened on Earth. And they are questioning Alan about it. Oh, well, I guess R.I.P. Alan. Oh, I guess maybe he's still alive. Oh, I think Thetis is the mole. Yep, he's turning off the machine. It, I guess that's the end until the oh, the post credit scene that we got here. Uh, all right, talk to you later. Okay, I thought the episode was ending, but apparently it didn't at that point. Gotcha. So now we've got like 20 minutes left. I'm going to record some more. Wow. And we have Leah Thompson from Back to the Future and other mini movies. Uh, David Diggs from Snowpiercer and Sandra O. Oh. Wow. They're sacrificing a Tuesday night. And it's Tuesday night for me as well. Oh, she is having a drink with the, uh, with the husband of the man who, wait, who murdered his wife. <laughs> Omni-Man. Yeah, I'm confused. Okay. Sam's dog is real. This mission to another planet sounds like a tramp. I don't know. Cecil thinks it is, maybe. I don't know. Oh, Nolan is the whatever supreme of this world. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I guess next week's going to be big. <laughs> he fell for it, too. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks, Steve, for uh, sending that feedback. I wasn't sure. Oh, wow. I was like, holy crap. It's a live Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, didn't really live Steve Aaron. Uh, yeah, but he said Leah Thompson, so I got to look back at that episode. I'm uh, wondering if uh, he looked at that and saw Leah Thompson's name in the, uh, the credits. Might have. I, I missed that one. I missed that one wow. completely. Was she the therapist for the... It's a possibility. I got to look back. So right? you listeners tell us. Obviously, Steve had something there that we didn't. All I got was Tatiana Maslany. I got Davi Diggs and Peter Cullen. So. 
but to prove to you that that we do get some feedback that Steve, yes, he is a co-host on Panels of Peaceful Podcast, but he's not doing this particular episode. He sent that in to just to have fun. And he did a live steving, which is a cool and awesome thing that we do get on occasion here. And he does it on a lot of the podcast network too for their particular podcast. So it's fun. Okay. I just looked it up. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I clicked on, the first thing I saw was that she was the voice of unknown character number 13. So I don't even know who that was. Damn. <laughs> he, he must have had the Amazon Prime thing and he just look at whoever's there and it yeah. just showed up. He hit pause to record and saw her name. Oh, good. Well, at least good he job, knows. Steve. Good job, Steve. But uh, like I said, listeners, yeah, all you have to do is send in feedback. And like you heard, you know, Steve uh, got that out to us. And that's awesome. Thank you, Steve. Actually, he just sent that out literally within like 15 minutes, 20 minutes before we started recording. <laughs> Well timed, Steve. And even if you're late, we'll play it the next episode. Not Same. a big deal. Yeah, exactly. That's to anybody else, too. If you feel that it's like, oh, it's something that you did in the past, like a, a podcast we did in the past, uh, or whatever, it's like we will still play it and we will still comment on it. it. Doesn't necessarily have to be about Invincible, it could be about anything. It'd be fun. But uh, yeah, th- that's how you could get us any feedback. But now is the time to let people hear where they could find you, Jamie. Uh, still attempting to record, watch it in the 80s for ET. Okay. We keep having um, family and illness issues. Oh, yeah, Damien. Yeah. yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. Yeah. So Co- COVID is a real thing, everybody, still. So, uh, yeah, that happens. People get sick. So it sucks. But, uh, so we'll get that. We will get there. We will get it done. Yeah, you guys will get that. And it'll episode be awesome, out. and you'll and you can listen to it. Yeah. Did you guys discuss which version you're going to cover? You're going to cover both versions. Um, you know, we didn't discuss. I should probably text him about that. The special edition <laughs> one that came after, or the original cut, because they did a lot of changes within ET. Or you could just combine it. And the now, discussion knowing point. us, we're probably we'll probably combine it. That'll be cool. Yeah. Cause, uh, a lot of you listeners out there, they, uh, they, when they re released ET on Blu ray, they kind of re edited it at one point and then they stuck the original back at one point too. <laughs> so you got to watch them. So if you're a true ET fan, you'll know. Yeah. So you could, you could hear Jamie on watched it in the eighties when that comes out for ET and their coverage there with Damien and then. Eventually, you'll be able to hear her as well on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, which is my other podcast. There we cover anything action, adventure, thrilling, horror, suspense, basically anything that gets your adrenaline going. So with that, the most recent episode that we have is Total Recall. That's out. I did that like about um, two or three weeks ago with Jason Gabassi from Podcastica. But Jamie and I will be doing Friday the 13th, the final chapter eventually. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting more people back onto the list that I originally slated years ago that I actually started to say, hey, uh, remember that thing that we were going to do? Let's do it. So I'm trying to get back in touch with people to do that. I might be doing a collaborative thing soon with our friend Diana from Aim for the Head. And it's going to be about Night of the Comet, which is an early 80s zombie-esque apocalypse style film. So um, it'll be a collaborative uh, effort between us. So we'll cover it and then both uh, broadcast it on our podcast. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be fun because uh, I like that particular movie a lot. So uh, look forward to that on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. But you could always still hear me here on Panels of Pixels Podcast as always uh, as we're coming towards the end of the four episodes so far of uh, Invincible. So the next one upcoming with Jamie and myself for here is Invincible Season 2, Episode 4. and Next one before the hiatus. Yep. And then uh, Rob and myself will have Gen V, the last two episodes of that for this particular season. And we'll have that out to you. Unfortunately, you know, with work and you know scheduling it didn't work out for us we were supposed to record last night which was monday the 20th of november and that uh did did not happen 
but uh, I will uh, let you guys know when that will be a pro out. And then um, after that, I have What If to come out on Disney Plus. And so Steve and I will be covering that. Uh, probably Rob himself as well. And Frank or whoever really wants to jump on at that point, because I love those shows there. It, it's such a weird dynamic in comparison to the regular MCU. I just like it because they're different stories so they can do whatever they want and then incorporate it possibly into the MCU. So look out for that. Uh, you could also hear me on fantasy picks movie edition as always. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the next episode is up, but uh, we have a good time on that one. It's like a football fantasy pack uh, for certain movies, just like what Ben Beck does on Wilhelm. But uh, in this case, it's more of a football based one. So you can't choose the same movie and whatnot. And then on top of that, we also do uh, pre we play basically armchair executives and try to change a movie that did terribly in the box office. So that's Rob Moda's uh, podcast, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, but I'm a regular there as well. Uh, you could also hear me currently on Vodcast Network, at where we're it's a dual podcast in collaboration with, there with Wilhelm and Podcastica. So you'll hear it the same feed on House Podcastica as I'm well. I'm excited as, to listen to it. As well as Wilhelm. So we're covering the Apple TV Plus series Monarch Legacy of Monsters. So that is uh, currently out. You have two episodes out currently. By after Thanksgiving, we will be covering episode three. We've already done one and two on one particular podcast. We had a great time, came up with some really weird conspiracy thoughts of what's going on within the episode. So check it out. I highly check it out. I've already publicized it in both the Panels to Pixels podcast, Facebook, as well as the Adrenaline Cinema podcast, Facebook as well for cross promotion. But uh, check that out. Uh, we will be doing that weekly and we'll have special guests, Jason Gabasi, our friend Prima, Daphne and Peg from Run for Your Lives as well. That's on Podcastica. And possibly another person, depending on whoever wants to come on, that we know that are good friends that do podcasting. So uh, check that out. All you have to do is check out for Wilhelm or on podcastica.com. So uh, that you can find me there in those places. But for that, that is our episode. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this was Panels the Pixels podcast different panel different pixel same podcast and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody bye